Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at another big boxed epic encounter from Steamforge Games as we take a look at the Barrow of the Corpse Crawler. Okay, it's time to have another look at an epic encounter. Uh, this is the Barrow of the Corpse Crawler and it's a big chunky box. So this contains the Corpse Crawler, 12 Gulkin Reaver tokens, double-sided mat, adventure book, all the stats and stuff you require to play it. Can you overcome this gluttonous abomination or will you end up as worm food? Inside this is everything you need to run a boss encounter. And it says it is a gargantuan size. So that's what is in the box. So let's have a look at actually what's inside the box. We have a flyer for the Hall of the Orc King, Caverns of the Frost Giant, Lair of the Red Dragon and the Shrine of the Kobold Queen. A set of Gulkin Reavers, so 12 tokens, single sided, it's that one mil card stock, I think, with a, oh, what's the phrase? Linen finish, so a bit of texture to it, good quality, nice print. Good die cut on them as well, you're not fighting to get them out. Have our mat, double sided, matte finish on it. It's um, good quality print. Here we see a sword in a crypt, surrounded by all sorts of unusual. Hieronymus Bosch like madness. The other side, a bit more sedate, less creepy. Potentially multiple phases. Here you see the corpse crawler itself, the two sides of the A2 mat. And then a bit of a blurb about the corpse crawler, what they're like, who could be behind it if you want to add this to your own adventure. And then bits and pieces and tactics you might want to try. Then there's the actual encounter itself, which I won't spoil too much. So you can get involved with that. Okay, so only one model in this box, which is the eponymous Corpse Crawler. It's a bit of a beast. So it's on a 100 mil round base. And as you can see, it uh, fills all of that and towers above it. How far does it tower above it? Let's have a look. There we go, about 12 centimeters tall. Say 11 and a half, 115 mil to the biggest spike. The model itself is a solid hard plastic. Two tones, so the base is a sort of grey and then the base itself is an olive drab. Really good detail on it. With this massive tremor-like maw, three beaks on it. And then all this texture over the top of the, uh, the skin itself. You can see a little bit of flashing. So I don't know if that's a glue point or that's just where it came out of the mold. It's gone now. 
don't mind me. Um, but yeah, you can see this. Yeah, there must have been a glue point there because I can see another sprue gate that's been cleaned off. Needs a bit of a touch up underneath. See a slight, slight mold line here and on the occasional spine as well. So this spine has got um, a noticeable bit of flashing on it. Just needs to trim up with a, a knife or possibly a bit of sandpaper over it. I like the dead people strewn around the base, buried into the walls, like some sort of pit with all its little baby corpse crawler parts gribbling all around the floor. If you are going to go ahead and uh, paint this, there's a ton of detail on it. That will pick out really easily once you get the primer down and maybe a, a zenith or a dry brush. And if you're not going to, then it's a big looking beast as is. I really like the way the, um, the majority of the mold lines, the seams run along the very edges. So you can see it's along the edge of the beak. However, they've managed to do that. So you don't lose detail on the face. I use the face term quite loosely there. Um, but you don't have big seam lines running around the jaws or through the middle of it. That's quite neat. I do have one that runs horizontally through the torso here, but in the whole, that's not necessarily a difficult thing to tidy up. It's a really nice, nicely produced monster and really, that's about to be a venom sack of some description, isn't it? Um, a really nicely put together thing as well. Good design. Should be interesting for people to have to deal with. Of course, if um, you've seen the last review for the Hive of the Ghoulkin, you'll know that there were Ghoulkin Reavers in it. So there was eight. So if you have that, you could use those instead of using these tokens. Or if you're just looking for the big beastie, then that is also very doable. But there we have it, the Corpse Crawler. Interesting box of fun. So there we have it, a uh, great standalone monster boss to finish off your campaigns, or if you've already got the Hive of the Ghoulkin, you can sort of pair them up essentially, um, use miniatures from both and uh, play an epic campaign out with your grip. Let me know what you think below folks. Until next time, bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it, go on.